Hello everybody. I've been feeling kind of down. <laughs> and all I want to do is lay back and watch movies. And one of the movies that I loop, just put on loop, just, there's two. It's Pride and Prejudice and the new Emma, the 2020 Emma. I just watch those on loop. I just, they make me feel right. They make me feel good. But Emma has some of the most stunning set design and just room design I've ever watched in a movie and it has actually completely inspired my living room which you will see a video about soon but it got me thinking like it would be really fun to talk about movies that have decor I really love since I'm currently in the middle of a massive house renovation and I often get asked where does my inspiration come from? Now that I actually have a house that I'm renovating, whenever I'm watching movies, I'm like, oh yes, that is interesting. Oh yes, yes. And so I thought it would be really fun to go through movies that have inspired my house decor. I want to start with the movie that was my favorite house I've ever seen to the point <laughs> That years ago, I literally posted on Instagram saying, are any of you architects? Because I want help with a project. And I made a friend. They were going to help me basically recreate the house from this movie so that I could build it on some land and just live in this house. That is how much I love this house. It didn't end up happening because I ended up buying this house instead of buying land. But maybe one day, the movie is The Secret Window. <laughs> because this is a horror thriller movie from 2004 it says on imdb nobody remembers this movie it is another stephen king adaptation i think from one of his short stories and i remembered really loving the house in this movie but also really liking the movie in general and so i was like a couple years ago let's rewatch it it's a terrible movie it's a really really bad movie. <laughs> it has terrible pacing, the plot is kind of dumb, the ending doesn't make sense, it's just kind of not good. But the house in this movie is so spectacular, it is so beautiful, and if I were to one day build a house, which might be a thing I do, I don't know, how old am I? I'm 26, I've got many years to, to, to go. If I were to ever build a house, it would be like this, this open, cabin style house. It has this very open kitchen, this huge open living room, and it's got this big loft that is this writer's uh, writing area. He's got his desk there. They never show the bedrooms or the uh, bathroom, so you don't really know how the rest of the layout is. It also is so important that this house is in the woods because of all just the vibe of the house, the amount of windows, the porch, all of that sort of stuff. It feels like a house that belongs in the woods. So that's my number one, just my favorite house I've ever seen in a movie. But next, let's talk about Emma. Harriet, I cannot see it without thinking of him. Burn the frame if you like, but you must keep the likeness. Then I will take it. I will take it and I will treasure it as a picture of my friend. Emma, starring Miss Anya Taylor-Joy, who I wish was my best friend. She is so amazing. I really think we could bond over the fact that we both speak Spanish. I don't know. <laughs> Regardless, the house in this movie, okay, is so colorful. The colors in this house. You know, people will tell you, historians will tell you, you know, the past wasn't all browns and beige. It was very colorful. It's just that those colors have really faded over time in clothing and in architecture and in statues and stuff. So to just see like the story unfold in this really cheerful, happy 
house. I love the colors. I love that every room is its own color, sort of disregarding what the other colors are. I love how it clashes with their clothing. I just, for me, the main thing here is the color and the crown molding, the trim. <laughs> it's just so beautiful. Okay, the next one is a movie I just saw a couple of months ago. I really loved this movie. We were doing a thing in my house where every night we would watch uh, half of a movie. So this went over like 10 days because there's five of us here. We did different challenges and one of the challenges was to watch a movie n you'd never seen before. So I chose Moonstruck because it was like, it's Nicolas Cage's first movie and it's got the famous share snap out of it line. Like there are a lot of things, reasons to watch this movie. What the hell happened to you? I really don't know where to start. Your hair's different. Ma, everything is different. Are you drunk? No, are you drunk? No. But I have a hangover. It was fantastic. It's so strange. I don't think ev it's for everyone, but I loved it. But the, <laughs> the secret star of this film is the kitchen at Cher's family's home. I love this kitchen. It's like an old school, kind of cluttered, kind of uh, run down, but charming kitchen. The color of this kitchen, it feels so cheerful and it just feels like at the end of the movie, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but like like at the end of the movie, a place for gathering, a place for having conversations, a place for sitting down for a cup of coffee, but also sitting down for dinner. It's just like that central hub of the house and I love this kitchen. So wanted to mention it. Before I talk about the next movie, I'm sure you are very jealously staring at my beautiful bed sheets. Today's video is brought to you by Brooklinen. Brooklinen's goal is to deliver simple, beautiful, high quality home essentials at a fair price. High quality bed sheets can be really expensive, but Brooklinen gives you the quality and comfort at an affordable price by cutting out the middleman. It's funny because when I was designing this bedroom, you know, I thought a lot about the bed frame I was getting and you kind of see it, but you actually see a lot more bed sheet <laughs> and duvet cover than you do bed frame. So it's a really lovely way to elevate your room's decor by choosing some really gorgeous to look at sheets, but then also these are so comfortable. They're so soft. I was so excited as I was opening the package because they are so lovely and soft. I went with a bundle option, which meant I got a flat sheet, a fitted sheet, a duvet, and pillowcases all 25% off. And if you're interested, you can use my link down in the description to get an additional 15% off of your entire order. Thank you again to Brooklyn M for sponsoring this video. The next one. Okay, this is a weird one. This is I'm not saying necessarily this is inspiration for my home, but I am saying it's the house that in film stuck with me as a kid. And it's Nanny McPhee. <laughs> They're in the kitchen. No, 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 no. You took them down for toast. I never did. You sent them to bed with their dinner. That's what done it. Why don't you, um, no, I, I think I'd better do it. Well, no, I, I can't. You, you, um, I'll... I'll be off. Yes, you, you, I'll, I'll just... So this is, like, a classic kids film about an, it's basically Mary Poppins. It's about a nanny who comes to help some kids out. But the house, if we just focus on the house, is so colorful but like garish. It's garish in its color choices. It's these really saturated greens, yellows, blues, and every room feels like, I don't know, it just feels kind of crazy. It feels a little like a circus, which I think is sort of the point, like this family is losing it. <laughs> but I remember distinctly always loving that house. I loved how colorful it was. And I loved that it had so much personality and so much charm. And I remember always thinking like, why don't we do that in North America? Because, you know, Western, aesthetic is very white 
and I get it. I also like white, but I also have my pink floor. Like, I think there's a healthy medium here. One thing I love about living in Nova Scotia is that the houses on the outside are painted really bright, exciting colors. Uh, you can see this like in Halifax, you can see it in Lunenburg, but you also see it rurally, just people painting their houses fun colors. And I'm like, yes, why don't we do that? In, like, why is that not a thing in Toronto? <laughs> That'd be so much better. <laughs> the next one. And with an E. Um. She's gone. Gone? I'll check the silverware. Introductions. It's funny because I'm currently reading Anne of Green Gables. I think the book is in my office. But it explains that the house would have a lot of character if it wasn't so clean. Like Marilla keeps this house so tidy and so neat. It feels a little sterile. And I think they nailed that in the adaptation. The house has so much charm and is so beautiful, but it's also a little sparse and spartan because she doesn't have anything frilly or anything unnecessary. For Marilla, it's all about practicality. All of that being said, I love this house. I love its old country charm. I love that it's not that cluttered, actually. It works really well for Green Gables, like for this specific house that they filmed at. I love the giant table that they have in the kind of living room slash sitting room slash uh, dining room. And they kind of have these two rooms that just have two big tables. And then they have a living room that they kind of seem to never use because it's the practical space of the kitchen. Again, it's like in Moonstruck, but it's like these, these kitchen spaces, especially like Anne of Green Gables being set, I think it's set in the late 1800s. The kitchen is where Marilla and Anne are spending a lot of time doing a lot of cooking and baking and sewing and different sorts of projects. So it's a very functional space, a very lived in space. A lot happens there. Um, and I just love the big table and the, that actually, that house is all white on the inside and it feels so clean and big, but it still has so much charm. Oh, I love that house. And I love that series, damn it. <laughs> the next one I have to shout out, it is the cabin in Kiki's Delivery Service. Hello, anyone home? Is anybody here? Anybody, hello? Anybody here? Yes, stop shouting, I'm on the so in Kiki's Delivery Service, there's this scene section where she goes to hang out with a friend, an artist friend who lives again in the woods in a cabin. That aesthetic, the, I guess it's cottage core. That's what the kids are calling it, right? This cabin is actually very similar to the secret window cabin. Um, I mean, it's really, really small, but it has that charm of like, you're living in the woods. And you know what's really funny? I sort of now live in the woods, not really, but uh, like, rural, there's woods behind my house. The woods are actually kind of gross. <laughs> I actually like, I wish that I could just lay in the grass, but I am so scared of getting a tick bite and developing Lyme disease. So, you know, like this house in Kiki's delivery service, this cabin is sort of a dream. It's a fantasy because I don't think I'd actually want to live that much with nature where it's sort of creeping in and I'm sure there's mice running around there all of the time again with the with the Lyme disease <laughs> but aesthetically and I think oh I watched this beautiful video I will link it down below of somebody kind of recreating a Studio Ghibli type home Studio Ghibli just has that aesthetic of such a beautiful uh quaint cute charming thoughtful vibe that I really love um, and I just this cabin is kind of 
quintessential, quintessential. Okay, two more. 20th century women. I partly put this here because I just want you to watch that movie. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Jamie's not here right now. Twentieth Century Women is such a beautiful film. It is so gorgeous and it has such a good cast. Such a good at Greta Gerwig. Everyone loves Greta Gerwig. It's got Gilbert from N with an E. <laughs> Elle Fanning. It's got Elle Fanning. And then what's her name? Annette. Annette. Annette Benning. Beautiful cast. Beautiful film. And I feel like people slept on this one. I never hear people talking about this movie. You'll enjoy it. It's a really gorgeous film. But it's kind of about growing up. It's sort of a coming of age film. But you're seeing... Maybe it's more about like a transition film. Like three different characters transitioning into the next stages of their life and that grew the growing pains. But part of it, and now that I said that growing pains transitioning thing, part of it is that they are in this old house that they're sort of restoring. And it's very much a background thing. It's not in the forefront of the film. It's not a home renovation movie. It's not a, it's not like one of these movies where it's like, oh, we're renovating a film and we're gonna fall in love while we renovate it. No, it's very much in the background. But you see the house throughout the movie and it's a really beautiful house. And I like how stately it is and how old it is. It's so fascinating because I am, I have a fear of antiques. I'm really quite scared of antiques, but for some reason, it's an irrational fear. It's a phobia, it's an irrational fear, so it doesn't have to make sense. For some reason, I'm not scared of old houses. Um, I just see them as like these stately, beautiful things um, that we must restore. <laughs> so I really love the house in that movie. But the final movie I actually wanted to shout out was The Porch in Jane Austen's book club. Oh, I got you those books. Hmm? You know the ones I suggested? The Ursula Le Guin. Oh, yeah, thanks. That was thoughtful. You don't have to bring a hostess gift to these meetings, FYI. It's just a book club. Where's the heat between Emma and Mr. Knightley? There's no animal passion. Look at Frank Churchill and Miss Fairfax. You can tell they're really in love because they behave so badly. And that's good? Emma and Mr. Knightley, you just never feel the sex. Still, I think Mr. Knightley's very yummy, don't you? He may be my favorite of all the Austin men. One of my favorite movies of all time. Oh my God, this movie, this movie, this movie is so good. I wish you would watch it. I wish you would watch it. If you like Jane Austen, if you like reading, this is the movie, okay? It's about a book club who's reading Jane Austen and, you know, they're having conversations and they're living and they're growing while they read the books and they discuss the books. It's a specific niche, I think. <laughs> but there is this one scene when they're discussing Emma. They're hanging out on a porch. And overall, this house is really lovely. Clearly, I like it when a home is in the country and has some woods. But the porch in this house is so beautiful. And it's such a goal of mine. And I will do it. But it is such a goal of mine to build a porch like this porch on my house because it's such a beautiful place to hang out. Like getting to hang out outside is so beautiful, but it becomes instantly not beautiful when you're being attacked by mosquitoes, when the ground is wet, you know what I mean? Like it's like the, that fantasy is over. But if you have a porch, if you give yourself a nice place where you can sit and hang out outside, I mean, wow. So I love this porch, I love this scene. But I really love this porch and I love that they had like all of these people just hanging out and talking. That's like my dream, just to have my friends hanging out on my porch. One movie I wanted to mention before everyone yells at me in the comments is Call Me By Your Name. I have not seen this movie. I haven't seen it. 
I need to. I haven't read the book either. I own it, but that means nothing. Every list I looked at for like movies with great houses or great design inspo had this on the list. So this is on my to watch list for house inspo. It would be so much fun if you guys would tell me down in the, in the comments, is there a house or a room in a house? Like the porch, the kitchen, an area in a house that inspired you or you were like, oh my God, I would love to have that kitchen, that living room. Like I said, I actually am basing my living room off of Emma, <laughs> off of a room in Emma. That video is coming super soon. I think you're gonna enjoy it. I had a lot of fun recreating the room. So I hope you look forward to that one and I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you so much to Brooklyn for sponsoring. Click their link down in the description and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.